Hey, g'day, and welcome back to the Stuart number 8 middle engine build. I've lost count of how many episodes I've done with this now, it just seems to be taking forever. But uh, in this particular episode, I'm going to do a lot of the operations on the steam chest and the cylinder, which uh, haven't been done yet. So things like drilling for the flanges, which uh, take care of the exhaust and the steam inlet. Uh, also going to be drilling the holes through the cylinder for the uh, drain cocks and cutting the rectangular pocket for the exhaust port. Uh, I might also get around doing the cladding which goes around the cylinder itself and just general bits and pieces. Uh, I still haven't done the slide valve or the slide valve rod either so maybe we'll see how we go. But uh, the other thing I want to talk to you about was something that's been missing in my life for quite a long time and something that I've really been looking forward to. Uh, we're talking German, we're talking very tall, we're talking sensual curves. And, uh, well, I think the best thing to do is just come take a look. Enough of that nonsense, we've got steam engines to build.
stop that. care of the cladding or cleating I've heard it called both uh, cleating I believe is spelled C-L-E-A-D-I-N-G I did originally make some paper templates for this so this was uh, one that I did off camera and I just experimented with sort of marking the holes using a scriber point punching it through into the existing holes in the cylinder this is the one that I made uh, on camera and this was to just give me an accurate length for the cladding or the cleating and also the position of the bend lines which are pretty vital. I also made uh, a mock-up in just some galvanized steel sheet. Uh, see how that went. That's that one. Uh, I don't know if you noticed but there's a series of um, kinks all the way along that material and that's quite common with uh, material that's been rolled cold the stresses are not relieved evenly when you go to roll it and uh, it makes a terrible mess. The only way to uh, stop that happening is to roll the material very gently over a mandrel uh, on both sides. So keep reversing the direction of the bend and that will eventually relieve the stresses and soften the material so it will bend evenly. This is the, uh, the material that was supplied in the Stuart kit. Um, I thought that it was a type of material called Russian iron, which is um, quite commonly supplied in, in the very old Stuart kits. Uh, when I marked this one out and bent it, it did exactly the same thing as this one and this one, this other mock-up that I made. So I put it in a jeweler's roll and rolled it backwards and forwards, got rid of most of the, the kinks in it. But at the end of the day, I wasn't happy about making it out of steel. I was worried about the corrosion. I am eventually going to uh, powder coat this anyway in a sort of a satin black. So I scrapped this. And the other issue is that this material is nearly half a millimeter thick, a little bit more than that. And if we were to assume that this engine was built to the scale of about um, one inch to the foot, by the time you scale this up, this material would have been about six millimeters thick, which, I don't know, that seems a bit excessive to me. So this um, brass shim, I think, is a, probably a closer match to scale. Now, I uh, eventually just marked out all of these holes using a digital height gauge. My lovely digital height gauge, the German one. It's beautiful. Um, and surprisingly nearly all of the holes worked out perfectly so uh, I think that was more a case of being able to mark the cylinder out in the same way and I knew what the dimensions were so it wasn't too hard to replicate those on the, the cleating or the cladding I think the only holes that I had to relieve a bit were the two for the studs at the center here uh, having said that I'll probably have trouble now reassembling it.
Well, there you go. That's one of the joys of having fat fingers and arthritis. So I reckon that looks quite neat. I still have to make the little bronze flanges that go on here.
I suppose I should say a word or two about the slide valve for this engine. This is once again a bronze casting. It's been already cored out for the cavity in the slide valve. And I've got zero reference surfaces on this already. So the first thing I'm going to do is to get this surface flat. Now, this is a pretty much a brand new file. And Rather than try and grip this in the device in the milling machine and mill that flat or put it in the forge or chuck, I'm going to just rub it on the file and get that surface flat and then later on I can lap that uh, or rub it on emery cloth on some plate glass or something to get that dead flat. But for the moment I just want to get this surface reasonably true and then I'll use that to do all of the rest of the surfaces. I also don't really want to reduce the depth of that cavity if I can help it. Alright, that's probably good enough. I'll leave it there for now and we'll do all of the rest of the surfaces. Some of these sizes are well oversized so it's going to need a lot of milling to get this down to the correct dimension. So. Let's go to the milling machine. So I've just done some rough marking out to get the overall size of the slide valve correct. Um, these measurements on the top, bottom and the top can just be machined to the line. They're not terribly critical. But the ones at either end, they have to be accurately spaced apart. That's just to ensure the uh, correct timing events that happen during the revolution of the steam engine itself so I, I'll just machine one end and then I'll check the other end with a caliper and get that right and I've marked height on there just on the, the rough casting it's a bit hard to see but there's about two or three or two millimeters to come off the top of that so I've just got this sitting on a parallel at the moment everything's rough at this stage so not terribly worried about getting this first one right. Not on the line. It's a bit hard to see with that burr there. Okay, so we're on the line there now, so I'll just deburr that, flip it over to the other side. Well, that's a uh, width right, and I need to get one end cleaned up now and square. So I'm thinking I'm going to do this on the four jaw chuck. So uh, just simply because it makes alignment easy. If I do it in the vise, I've got to somehow square that 
with the vice jaws and it's a fiddly thing to do. So um, just stand by, I'll just clean up one end on the four jaw chuck. Well, as you can see there I've cleaned up that end of the four jaw chuck on the lathe so it's just a matter of taking care of this one last dimension here now and this one does have to be fairly accurate so uh, I'm going to check that with a caliper and uh, try and work to a defined size rather than relying on the marking out here. Alright, I stopped a tiny bit short, it's about four hundredths of a millimetre oversized, so I'll clean all of that flat surface up and then we'll machine the top down to the correct height. Alright, so that's probably a little bit oversized again, but a lot of cleaning up to do. So there's um, a slot that needs to be cut for the, the valve rod in the top of the slide valve and a cross slot cut for the nut. Interestingly, the drawing shows a drilled hole for the valve rod, which seems odd to me. Uh, it's also an eighth of an inch, which is the same diameter as the valve rod. My understanding was that these valves should be free to move up and down in the cavity to account for any wear in the slide valve. So rather than drilling a hole, I will put two slots um, and then that will give the adjustment that we need. Well, I've decided to mill the slot for the valve rod spindle using the CNC mill and uh, I did do a tool path that did both the nut slot and the spindle slot at the same time but then realised I was going to hit my vice jaw so I'd like to do them separately which is a bit of a pain. The, uh, I'm using the same 3mm carbide bit that I used to do the exhaust uh, slot or the exhaust port in the cylinder so I'm hoping it's not blunt but um, I'll go ahead and cut this one. I'll check the, the fit of the valve rod spindle uh, because it's less critical and the one for the nut has to be a, a really good fit so if I need to adjust it I'll do it before I cut the other slot. Alrighty, here goes. Uh, that seemed to go okay, so I'm just going to check the, the fit of the spindle rod in that slot. Alright, well that's better than I thought it would be. It seems to be wider at the top than at the bottom, but I figure I can dress that a little bit with a file. This is the stock that I'm going to use to make the nut, and ah, that's good. That's a good fit too. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the cross slot uh, for the nut and then I'll flip it over and do the cavity underneath. The cavity is already cast in but I'm just going to tidy it up a bit and get nice clean sharp edges on it. Alright, no real disaster there and I missed the beginning of that shot but uh, using the same 3mm carbide cutter and the slot itself is 3.2mm wide or it should be and I didn't go into the cavity which I was worried about because this slot has to be somewhat uh, deeper than the spindle slot 
to allow the nut to fit all the way down. Damn, I'm good. A little bit tight at the bottom, but that's all right. So I'm going to make the nut, and then I think I'm going to wind this episode up here. Well, here we are. I sort of feel like we're at the end of another episode. I did end up milling out the cavity for the slide valve on the CNC mill. So the slide valve is now finished, and I've just done a trial assembly of all the parts, and so far it's looking good. The steam chest fits on nicely. The valve is traveling up and down as it should inside the cavity of the steam chest. The piston and the piston rod are all working quite well. Drain cocks are in place, the cylinder cladding is all done and it's starting to look really nice. I still have some plumbing to do with the uh, lubricator. This is a displacement lubricator and there's a T-fitting here which um, I believe should be attached to the seam inlet pipe and this end should be attached to the steam chest. Unfortunately the the fitting that's in there is incorrect. It's a quarter by 26 uh, model engineer fitting and uh, I've got a 3 16 by 40 gland on the outside of the steam chest so that's going to have to be modified. But um, that takes care of all of that end of the engine except for the clevis for the valve rod which I'll be looking at in the next episode. So I'm going to wind this one up here and uh, I'm guessing now we're about, I don't know, 70% of the way through. Still a lot of work to be done and a lot of finishing and cleaning up and um, you know, testing and so on. But we're getting close. So if you've been watching this series, and I, I believe there's about 35 of you who've been watching, which uh, nothing like that, you know, like 1.3k views you get for some of these YouTubers, but I don't know, if I'm reaching 35 people, I'm happy. So, uh, for now, thanks for watching.